Hi folks, this week we are privileged to have Romantis Petraskas from eacoder.com being interviewed by the Lazy Treader. Romantis is one of the most well-known programmers amongst Forex traders. Having had more than 18 years of programming experience, he created two of the most popular trade copiers for the MetaTrader 4 platform, the Signal Magician and Local Trade Copier. Romantis is also an entrepreneur, automated trading system expert, co-founder of Auto Trading Academy, and co-creator of the popular trading strategy launch framework, which is by far the best method to create fully automated and robust trading strategies known to by the author. Wow, Romantis, is there anything you can't do? Welcome. Uh, yeah, first of all, first of all, welcome. Um, uh, welcome all and thank you for, for inviting me to this interview. Welcome. So I'm really, really excited here. Um, yeah, I th I think there are a lot of lots of things I can do. Yeah, but <laughs> I understand <laughs> the, the joke. Yeah. <laughs> but um, it's a it's a pleasure to have you on, and thank you for taking part. Um, it looks like you've got a pretty full schedule, and you're up to a lot these days. Um, but how did you get into EAs and coding? You've been in the industry for a long time. Yeah, I begin. I think. Um, I I think I, I began trading like in 2007 or, or maybe 2008. So obviously those were the first years, you know, just figuring out what, what it's all about. And being a programmer, for, for me, it was like quite easy to understand how all this MetaTrader full programming language works and stuff, you know. So it's really quite similar as many other programming languages. So it was for me quite easy to get into the field, you know. So I just started creating little indicators and scripts and EAs just for myself to make it easier to trade Forex, you know, like um, I was browsing and finding lots of trading strategies on the, you know, on the internet, just trying them out and lots of them. Uh, were on the daily time frame and I remember the first EA I created was on a daily time frame and this meant that I need to get up like at 3 a.m. like in my time um, just to place the trades and obviously not every day the trade will be um, needed to be placed basically so but you just find out this at 3 a.m. when you just wake up <laughs> in the middle of the night um, so when I just started creating EAs, everything got a little easier, obviously. So those were the first uh, touches of the you know MetaTrader programming. And soon I realized that there are lots of people on, on the forums that ask for, for indicators, EAs and so on. And I just, you know, I just woke up one day and thought, well, I can I can do this for other people and just offer like programming services. So I started doing like freelancing, um, so building EAs for other people. And I've been doing this for quite a while. And um, at the beginning of 2014, I stopped doing custom coding and just began to focus more and more on my, um, on my own trading apps, like, like Trade Copier and, you know, other EAs that I have. And uh, recently, we started working on creating automated systems like like expert advisors, like we know them, like doing you know, uh, earning money on on accounts without without human intervention. I see. Uh, yeah, and that's what we've been doing for the last few years. I have I have a partner now in Auto Trading Academy. Yeah. So I kind of kind of have you know two two areas where I'm focusing to so the. The one is like focusing on my software, like the Trade Copper and others, uh, and other apps. And the other area is like Auto Trading Academy, when I'm where I'm working with my partner. So we're doing like this together. Awesome. Well, I mean, you know, I, I guess there'll always be a, a ready market for your services, given that you're in a slightly different uh, time zone. You're in uh, Lithuania, which is two hours ahead of Western Europe, which means that okay, the European session were the most uh, heavily traded. Um, sessions for certainly forex transactions. It will mean that anyone who's slightly ahead, whether they're in Asia, um, Southeast Asia, South Asia, um, Eastern Europe, can have the advantage by not having to get out of bed 
And that suits us lazy treaders very well, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, so what, I mean, it sounds like you've really utilized this neat niche and um, you're really kind of like looking at other avenues. Um, there seems to be a proliferation of people also looking to create their um, own EAs. But I mean, not everyone's cut out for it. I think you have to be a specific type of personality. Would you agree to have the discipline and the um, tenacity to create your own EAs? I mean, what kind of core skills uh, would you recommend? Well, um, if, if to speak about um, uh, creating EAs and, and kind of discipline, so I would say that discipline we need it in every area of our lives. So as well, we need it in, in creating EAs, like if you get up in the morning and you're just lazy to get to create an EA, <laughs> it, it won't create itself, basically. But uh, it's not that difficult like it used to be years before. Mm. And uh, I, I still see that like most of of the traders uh, just don't know about all the all the software and all the tools and the, and the techniques that are available these days to create EAs. Like uh, like a few few years ago, the only way to create EA was like to program it. Like you really had to hire a programmer or just learn the MQL language yourself and and do all the programming. Um, then we had these tools um, that usually call like EA builders. Okay, so bespoke for the industry. They're like turnkey. Yeah, so so basically it made like things easier, but still not that easy as it is right now. When we have a, uh, these called um, basically strategy generators, so we just play, click the play button, and literally the software has this play button basically <laughs> and that's all you need to click obviously before setting it up like what currency pay you want to use like what time frame and what kind type of indicators like you want to move in averages or you want RSI or stochastics or it can even allow you to import your own custom indicators and literally you just click play button and it just start generating all the variations possible right in in a random fashion like ra random strategies and they just use a back test on the on the history data that you import into the mm. software and it just looks which ones um pass the back test and which ones doesn't and you can even enter your like dismiss criteria so it's like you say okay i want to see the strategies only the ones that give me net profit of at least a thousand dollars and i want return to drawdown ratio to be at least say five and uh, minimum amount of trades i wanted to see like maybe 200 and uh, if any of those strategies doesn't you know pass these criteria just get dismissed and all you see only good strategies get into your data bank. And literally this method, uh, using this method, you can create like hundreds, if not thousands of EAs Fantastic. in a day. Wow. So basically programming these days, uh, it's, it's, it's basically useless. <laughs> I can't say like it's useless 100% because, you know, programmers like myself and, 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 and other programmers, they can obviously still get the... Um, uh, get a lot of benefits from knowing the programming language because then they can take these EAs and customize them in their own ways. And some, you know, there are still a lot of things that these softwares can do because custom programming is like, you know, uh, you know that customized things is always need to be like human involved to customize it. Of course, but, yes. Yeah, but basically, if if um, for for like regular traders, uh, which uh, the, most of the traders you know don't know the programming, so they don't need it anyway, Understood. because they can generate like thousands of these EAs and just pass them through more and more uh, like tests and robustness tests and these kinds of uh, stress tests, like it's also called, and just see which strategies have the biggest potential to survive in the live market and just you know test them on demo first 
then maybe on small real accounts and if they see they work in like for three or six months they can move them to a bigger account and so and so on but basically it's like it's like if you if, if if you allow i can tell you a short story like recently uh one of my customers contacted me and he he says you know can you can you create me the ea and i had this awesome trading strategy i don't know where he get that but someone just sold him the trading strategy and told him that it's one of the best is like the secrets of the secrets or you know whatever the holy grail yeah it's like holy grail thing and, <laughs> i've heard and, that before yeah and he sent me like i don't know maybe 20 pages pdf file with all the difficult explanations and oh my god how many trading rules there are with and I remember there were there were not only the indicators included, but there was uh, like um, um, how to call it, like Fibonacci. Yeah, it's good lord. Yeah, it, yeah, it was it was Fibonacci, and it was I think it was waves and something. It was it was really it was so difficult even to understand the strategy and it would be so difficult to code it and i just told him i can do that like for five thousand euros if you want it and he said well, why the price is so high i said well because it will take me like i don't know maybe a month to create this ea and and, and test it well and and so on and and he said well i don't know it's 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 too big you know the price is too big i, I can't afford that but still, then he he told, what if we what if we take just the the first area like just these few indicators without the Fibonacci's and all the other uh, complicated stuff? Well, okay, I told, uh, let me just do this. Let's do the experiment. I won't take any money. I will just I will just create the EA for you, and we backtest it, and and you will see that it will it won't work the way that they're telling you. So I created the EA, and uh, over the like 13 years of historical data, like backtested, and it was quite a low time frame. I think it's five minutes, maybe or, or 15 minutes. So usually on, on such a low time frames, you get a lot of trades, um, and it produced like maybe I don't know 20 trades over these 13 years wow and the, uh, and the last like maybe four or five years there was no no trades at all and he says well maybe it's because we didn't add like fibonacci and all that other complicated pricing pattern stuff but i just say well you know if we add those the the trade number would be even lower <laughs> <laughs> well, so the person, the person who sold him the uh, the system, might have not have expected him to have gone to the trouble of creating an EA. So it sounds yeah, so, like the game was up. So imagine, like it, this EA, it, it was using like I remember it was three moving averages and and maybe maybe stochastics, so one extra indicator. I can't remember exactly what that was, but it doesn't matter. But basically. I, I told him, well, you can attend our webinar and we will tell you how strategies are created and we we will have the demonstration of the software where we do that. And you just you just select that you want to like moving averages. Uh, I want to stochastic. I want to take profit, stop loss and, you know, other like like really simple things. Everyone knows that exist in trading. Like, do you want to? Uh, use pending orders for the breakout systems or just enter at market, you know, these these simple things. And just software generates you lots of VAs uh, that already passes the backtest and show you quite good results. Obviously, this doesn't mean that each one of them will work in the live markets and so sure, on because sure. they can be corfeted and so on. You know, there's this total different story about that and all the robustness tests that we're mm. doing to to see which ones um, have the potential to survive, but still, why spend uh, weeks and hundreds of dollars, or maybe even thousands of dollars, hiring programmers these days? Of course, uh, to build the strategies that you found somewhere online, or you just purchased a PDF and you think it's something like a holy grail, mm. and you know these strategies—they just show you like maybe one or two or three trading setups. 
from like I don't know like 2007 <laughs> and and people think they will just continue to work but it's not the, it's not the case basically no sure well I mean EAs <clears throat> have to stand the test of time ultimately um, to uh, you know have a, have a verified track record I mean some do well some do extremely badly and the example you gave me was I guess an extreme case but would you say uh, Romantis that simplicity in creating your own kind of EA is the key? I mean, what would you say makes a successful EA in layman's terms? Successful EA, I would say, is the one that passes the robustness test. So maybe I can introduce more about robustness test so that people could understand it more. But basically it's like, um, um, it's, it's also called a stress testing. So one of the best uh, robustness tests people can do is to test the trading strategy um, like thousand times uh, and each time like in each backtest use different strategy parameters so uh, robustness test like it, it's called like um, strategy parameter randomization that's that's the name of the robustness test that we're using most of the time basically you just set a deviation of say 20 percent and uh, the software runs like a thousand simulations of the same strategy and each time it changes the strategy parameters by 20 percent just by a random you know this time it changes this parameter and at time it changes these parameters and so on so basically if you have like maybe for example two moving averages and those would be like maybe 25 and 50 so during the robustness uh, parameter randomization it will use like it you know one time like 22 and 55 and then 18 to like 20 uh, sorry 56 maybe and you know it's it's a deviation of about 20 percent not more and uh, you just see what the results are and if you get that all those thousand simulation still goes up and all these thousand backtest results look good Obviously, they will, each of them will be different. Some will be performing better. Some will be performing maybe worse. But if you see that um, all these simul simulations basically ends up in profit, so maybe original ends up like maybe in 100% profit, and there are others that end up like in 105% or maybe 90%, 80% profit, you still see that even though you change the parameters of the strategy, it still passes the, you know, the test of, of, of the back test basically on different parameters. Sure. Uh, and if the, and if there are simulation that didn't pass and you know, most, most strategies basically only, only show the original and maybe other few simulations that go up and all others just plumber down, you know, just cone down. Uh, and it just tells you that, the strategy is not robust and it, it is likely it will not work and you just you shouldn't waste your time on that one so basically the strategies that we work with are only the ones that pass the robustness test and I if see. it passes the robustness test it means that you can mess up with the strategy like change its parameters which in other um, case would be like the market is changing always Absolutely. And that's one thing yeah. I wanted to ask you about. Even yeah, broker so spreads. One thing I wanted to ask you actually was um, a lot of um, certainly um, EAs sold online elsewhere. They have fantastic backtesting results uh, based on a demo account. But when it comes to live accounts of broker spreads quoted, um, the forecasting results generally are quite different. Um, would you say that there is the functionality to forecast or even backtest using spreads and variable spreads yes yes sure there is and we're, we're definitely using that so basically um when we first created a trading strategy we always created on so-called the open prices only model it's a backtesting model that is it is is the fastest because it doesn't take into account variable spread or or all the price ticks that happen it just like trades once per bar so it's it's really very fast and you can create like hundreds or even thousand strategies that way per day right it's literally that that's you know really big numbers basically uh, but once uh, you know once you get 
um, a big sample of strategies, say you have maybe a thousand or, you know, like when I'm out uh, for the weekend with my wife and I just leave the, the software running, you know, through the weekend when I get back on Sunday and if maybe I find like 3,000 EAs created, all looking good on the back test. But then I always retest them uh, on the so-called every tick method. It's like modeling, uh, back test modeling type called every tick. And MetaTrader has that and mostly, basically all the software has it. So okay. when you back test on every tick, um, there is usually an option to use the variable spread. And it's really a game changer for most of the EAs. And in some cases, it can work else against you. But in most cases, you just see um, how the EA would have been working if you had been using it like for the last 10 years. And because it you know, includes that variable spread that hmm. have, had, uh, have actually happened in the past, you know what would would have um, acted like during such times, like maybe Brexit or or NFP news, you know, on the Fridays and, and so sure. on. Because um, I think we even have a video in our trading course uh, where we um, where I demonstrate how you know I demonstrate visually how backtest during the, the backtest how spread is changing. And we can sometimes see that it goes up to the like 15 pips, I think. Yes. Um, yeah. And in most time it's like 0.2 because we, uh, I'm using the tick data from Dukas copy and they're like ECM broker. Oh yeah. So, in Switzerland, yeah, aren't they? Yeah. They have, they have really small spread. So usually it's, it's a better, better idea to add a little like one pip on top during the back test. Uh, even on, on top of the variable spread to get more realistic re results um, because most brokers don't have like 0.2 spread like on euro dollar um, and and you look at, you can literally see how the spread goes like to 15 pips during some price bars and it's really you know so basically if you just use a regular metatrader back test it always uses fixed spread so people usually enter something like, okay, I will use a bigger spread, uh, I will enter five. But they don't realize that five is just five pip uh, points, which is half of the pip. So <laughs> they're backtesting the EA, thinking that they're backtesting with a spread of five pips to make the real results more realistic, maybe, you know. It's good. Um, Overstate the uh, liabilities and understate the assets, like a, a prudent way of doing it. But, I mean, is, yeah. it, is it fair to say that even just one pip extra of spread, say, for example, um, many people are all too familiar um, that brokers um, increase their spreads overnight in the European session because of low liquidity. Typically, what used to be like a one or two pip spread suddenly becomes to a two or three pip spread. And that could really affect the results, especially of a high frequency trading system, would it be fair to say? Yeah, I would say that uh, the spreads um, mostly affect the scalpers like and, and high frequency trading. Um, like for the strategies that I usually create, I focus on creating uh, long-term trading strategies because I love th those uh, better. They are easier to work with and they are not so vulnerable to spreads. Basically, they are uh, not vulnerable, I, I can say. But if it's a, a scalper, like you're aiming for like two, five or maybe 10 pips. So, you know, two pips might mean a lot and if you're aiming for those two pips like it's a scalper that would mean um, your strategy is so vulnerable to spreads that if there will be difference like by two pips it would just get to the break even at, at its best basically okay so so yeah it's it's really important to know how all this works and during the back test i understand know what kind of of trading strategy you're uh, testing well a lot of people do certainly before they make uh, or create their ea it's the classic a lot of people certainly from our experience um with training them are all too gung-ho with 
going into the market and placing trades without knowing what they're doing. But when it comes to creating EAs um, with people who are experienced in making EAs and using them, I mean, what would you say is the biggest threat to consistent returns? I mean, would you say it's brokers suddenly increasing spread? Would you say it's uh, the black swan event, like, for example, when the SMB, Swiss National Bank, removed their commitment to defending the Swiss franc against the euro, or Brexit, for example. Um, how would you combat that with creating an EA? Would you have, like, um, safeguards protecting you against these black swan events, unpredictable, huge events that can cause the markets to move thousands of pips? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. I would include uh, safety safety for sure, especially when I never close the EA during the news. You know, there are lots of people think that, you know, you should close the EA when, when there's a big news event coming. But basically, big news event means that big price movement and big price movement means big profit. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, so if you're protected well, uh, it also might mean that it's a it's a big Loss, but if you're protected well, basically you will just get another losing trade, which you can get every day, anyway. You know, so um, if you if you get into the trade to get like hundred pips and you risk like maybe fifty pips, so why not try to do that during the news as well? If it's you know if it's it's likely to move hundred pips or maybe even bigger, <laughs> so why not be there? So basically, safety is really one of the most important things everyone should include in the EAs. And um, speaking with a few, I was speaking with a few like people that are running like hedge funds and uh, you know more more like of a private ones, and they're looking for people that create EAs. And I always try to find uh, like funds that are looking for such automated EAs, so I could you know get. Uh, get in partnership with them uh, and uh, what I found out is that they ask that your EA should have all these different um, security systems integrated so one of them is obviously the equity protection so basically every EA that you have uh, has a trading logic included and every trading logic should be back tested and you should know the expectations of the ea so for example if you see that on the last 13 years of a tick data on the variable spread back test your ea produced like 25 percent maximum drawdown so i would add like maybe extra five or ten percent to that so I would say maybe 35% drawdown for my EA is the is that limit what I would just close it and I would say, okay, something's wrong. I need to get to the drawing board or maybe just replace it with another one maybe that I've just created or have testing on another account, you know, and it's proven to work well and I can move it to the to a bigger account. But basically every EA should have um Every trader program should know the expectations of his EA. So um, that's the first thing. So basically, you you monitoring equity all the time, and if it gets like lower than preset number, you should close the EA and just get to the drawing board. You know, don't leave it to run it for bigger drawdowns and bigger and bigger and, and until the account is blown and, and you know. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. And the second one was a really good one as well, because they say you should always monitor the maximum number of trades that are opened on the account. And I and I immediately say, well, yeah, of course, you know, it's it's safe with my EAs because they have like uh, they work using the magic number, like all the EAs do mostly, and uh, they always know how many trades there are on the account. And I never open more than uh, one trade per currency pair. So, for example, if my EA is trading eight currency pairs, there will be maximum eight trades running. So I say, yeah, I can easily incorporate extra rule that, you know, maximum eight trades. But I, I don't need that because EA is already checking if there is a maximum one trade per currency pair and this, that magic number. And his response was, 
even shocking for me, and I never thought about <laughs> that before. So he says, well, you know, Remontas, there were lots of cases when the broker something upgrades or the changes in the system or whatever, and this makes the, uh, the trades running on the account lose their magic number or maybe EA loses the magic number for some reason or, or, or something unexpected happens. And he says, believe me, it's happened a number of times already with various EAs. And basically, when the EA loses magic number, he, he you know it cannot count how many open trades there are. And it might, you know, even though there are like eight trades already, it might think there are zero trades because magic number has changed. And this would mean it can open another eight trades. So basically, if you're trading big account, um, I'm sure anyone would agree that not, that's not the error you want to see, you know. And this can get even further and even worse if your EA for some ever will get to open trade and close it immediately, open it and close it. And and uh, um, I, I even seen one one trader lost his account to such EA overnight. So oh, nice. basically some, something happened at night after the midnight and the EA started to open trade and close it immediately. And it was doing this like nonstop, like open, close, open, close, open, close. And each transaction obviously charges you the spread and the commissions. So each transaction like uses, loses like a couple of bucks. And while the guy was sleeping, when he woke up in the morning, EA was still trying to open trades, but obviously broker returned the error on each attempt saying that not enough money, not enough money, not enough money. That's every broker's so, dream, isn't it? You talk about making money when you sleep and to your horror, you find <laughs> out you're losing money when you're sleeping. That's like the worst morning uh, kind of revelation. That yeah, yeah, that, that, I, I bet there was was one of the worst mornings for him. Absolutely, so, yes. I, yeah, so basically, that you know when I when I just heard about these stories, I told myself that yeah, that's really what I need to do, and yeah, it's one of one of my of, of the things that I have my on my to do list, obviously. But checking, you know, EA should be checking even the things that you could never think about can happen, and you can know about these things only like to listening interviews like this, maybe or reading st horrible stories of how EA messed up my account, you know, on some forums maybe. But basically, if your EA would, you know, if you if you see if you see a backtest and you see, for example, a uh, thousand trades, uh, like hypothetically, and you backtest the EA over the five years of history data. So there are 52 weeks in a year uh, or maybe we can even take the days, like 365 days times five makes it like 1,825 days. So if I divide that by 1,000 trades, like I get 1.8. So it means that I, I get to open a trade every 1.8 days. Well, easier to say every two days, basically. So if I get to open the trade, every two days on average, obviously that is, I can assume that maximum I can have one trade opened and closed per day. So I can, you know, for safety reason, I can make it maybe to two and just add an extra rule to my EA that should monitor. If it's a number three trade today, something's wrong and it should alert me like by email or maybe even better by SMS message. Uh, and if it do that, you know, I see that, okay, it's my EA got like the third trade today. I should see what's going on. Because <laughs> yeah. It's, it's unusual, you know, it's unusual, obviously. Like if you, if you, if your back that shows that on average you get like maybe even 20 trades per day, like if it's high frequency trading, I know a lot of people love that these, um, so you can add like, you know, if it's, if it's 30 trades a day, alert me, I want to, I want to know about that. So things like that really makes your EA protecting, 
protecting the account from itself, basically. I understand. That's, so so yeah, what would you do? Important. If, if, for example, if going what you say, like um, say you've backtested a strategy and it's yielded, say on average, 1.8 trades a day, or indeed, uh, historically, the biggest drawdown has been, say, 20%, worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. What would you do in the instance where, say, for testing, when you're trading it live, where you have, for example, suddenly a day where you've got eight trades out of the blue suddenly um, coming into play, or indeed, for example, you draw down by uh, 20%. Would you simply refine your strategy and look to see where these extra trades have snuck in? Or would you simply um, go back to the drawing board and maybe just uh, go on to a different strategy? What would you do in that sense? Would you refine it or would you go on to a new one? Yeah, that's a very good question. So basically, um, I currently don't monitor number of trades, so um, I will leave this for, for the second part. But as about monitoring the equity century, um, I will already do that. I have, I have the MT4 app created. I call it Equity Century EA. So it kind of monitors the equity and if it drops to a certain level that I just set for the EA, it just closed that, uh, all, of the all of the trades on the account, closed all the EAs running on the account and disables how to trade it, like to protect the account, you know. So actually at first it closes all the charts so to close all the EA so that no any new trades could be opened. Um, so it makes really, really safe EA to, to protect the account because if there if there's no any other trades running to open, you know, there will be new trades and it's safe to close all, all of the trades that we already have. So it will close and it will disable auto trading. So this means no trading is possible your account is secured, even though you've lost like, for example, 30% already, but it's still better to lose 30 than to lose 100%. So, and it alerts me, and then I get to the account, and I would get to uh, to analyze what just happened, why, you know, it reached so big um, drawdown and so on. And this requires to know the algorithm, like the trading rules of the strategy. So I would get to see uh, like maybe last 10 or 20 trades and I would see if they were executed properly um, if, if they you know if the EA followed the trading strategy or maybe some something unexpected happened on you know or maybe there were some gaps during the weekends that made indicators show like ridiculous ridiculous numbers and this triggered this you know um, ridiculous trades basically for the EA um, so there can be lots of basically scenarios what could get happen but first I would just see if it was the EA who opened the trades because of maybe mistakes or maybe it closed the trades because of some mistake that shouldn't closed it or you know and if I see that there are errors in the EA codes so obviously I would I would fix them and I, I usually would give EA a second chance. But if I see that the EA produced the trades following the trading rules and it got me into such a bigger drawdown that normally would not have happened like in the last 13 years in the historical data, um, I would say that such EA would need either to be dismissed and replaced with a new one or it it can go to the so-called walk forward analysis for kind of basically re-optimization, you know. But it depends on the trading strategy and the other few things that you know. It's not difficult to explain in a few sentences, basically. But um, it could be that a simple re-optimization of the EA would solve such problem. Um, uh, but obviously, if the re-optimization, you know, it's like it's a number five of reoptimization this month. <laughs> I hardly believe that it will help you the, the sixth time. <laughs> but <laughs> no, exactly. If, yeah, yeah. But if it's something like uh, what happened recently with one of my EAs, uh, it doubled account like in, in the first 12 months. And the next, I believe, 12 months were doing quite good as well. 
and then suddenly it got in a in a drawdown of 40 percent or something like that so i would not dismiss such strategy just like that you know just delete it and forget it because it was working fine for the last two two years basically and it was you know bringing me constantly profits every month so i would not dismiss it immediately i just thought okay so maybe i i just forgot about the ea that that was the reason basically and uh, i was just you know oh, it's doing okay i don't need to do anything with it but basically when i got to see the walk forward analysis results there was a suggestion to re-optimize the ea every i think 18 months or something like that and i thought my you know told to myself you know if i would have re-optimized the ea after 18 months maybe this would not even have happened but obviously i'm grateful for that mistake because now i know what could happen so i even have few eas running right now that i'm running on two accounts like the same ea and uh, i i will re-optimize one of them like periodically uh like every year or something like that and the other will just leave running as is so i could measure the differences you know how it how it happened when I re-optimize and what happens when I don't re-optimize the EA. And because it's the same broker, the same type of account, the same deposit, everything's the same, the same EA, I, I, then I can clearly say how important is re-optimization for this EA. Is it helpful or not? And, and so on, you know. So basically, I wouldn't recommend to dismiss the EAs right away. Um, but just try to look inside and just just play with it a bit, examine the results for you know uh, month by month and so on. If if you just see the EA created eight trades in one day, which normally doesn't happen, just try to examine what that was. Maybe if you just put those indicators on the screen that the EA is using, and you would just mark you know entry and exit spots with errors arrows sorry arrows like manually just to see where where you should have been entering like if you're doing this manually and see if the ea got entered and exited at the right spots like at the right time and if it did this correctly and if it maybe it, it was just a uh, one day in a year or maybe two years where the indicators happen to be so close to each other. Like when you put two moving averages on the screen, I bet you, you know, all of us seen that sometimes they get too close to each other, uh, almost to cross and, and maybe they cross up and down and up and down a few times for the, for the, you know, maybe for a few hours until they get separated again and just go opposite ways basically. So during that, those few hours when you're moving averages, crossing up and down a few times, if you're trading logic for, for this example, you know, just open the trades when it's, it's crossing up and down. So obviously you would get a lot of trades open at that time. So I would say it's completely normal. And you know that it happens sometimes on a rare occasion, basically. You can try to filter out these things, but it's you know if it happens like every two year once it, it it's not a big of a deal but obviously if you get to see that there's a error in the ea which happened to me before a few times basically um mistakes happen of course yeah like uh... yeah so i i remember i had this ea and it was entering the trades correctly but it was exiting them uh, at the wrong time. So basically it was the exit rule that was programmed incorrectly. So I had to fix that. And basically this led to the EA, to EA making this mistake. And basically it was like uh, it entered the trade and it should be holding it maybe for the next few days until the tick profit or stop loss hits. Um, and uh, the exit rule um, was programmed incorrectly and it was just closing it like I think it was uh, every midnight. So if you get the trade 
um, it closes always at midnight. <laughs> oh, no, so every broker's wet dream that the trade's been closed and reopened. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Another dream for the broker, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. But I mean, you know, it's, so you're, the essence of it, the crux of what you're saying is um, essentially to be successful at uh, programming EAs which perform long term require um, constant maintenance, keeping an eye on it, uh, retweaking things and optimizing and re-optimizing when necessary. Um, yeah. Certainly there'll be a lot of people who'd be interested in doing this. But of course, there are always going to be a crowd of people as well who understandably might be too busy and might be looking to get their own EA, which has been pre-designed online. Now, as I'm sure a man of your experience in the industry, Romantis, um, there are a lot of scammy EAs and bots out there on the internet. And I was just going to ask you, I mean, how can people listening to this determine whether, if they've come across anything online, whether it's a scam or whether it's a real EA with decent results and it's genuine? Whoa, that's that's really really good question, Rob. So basically, um, I even a few months ago I even released a series of videos on forexpsarmy.com, and they 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 thought those videos are so great, so they even emailed them to their to their you know subscribers. <laughs> so there was a uh, quite a few topics. Um, basically, it was all about the forex scams you know and oh, different, yes. different ways to do those scams and and how how to know if some ea is a scam or not um, um basically it's i would say um there are main ones like to know if it's a scam or not and uh, it, it's usually something like quite a general thing to 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 know um something if you go online and uh, the promise is too unrealistic you know uh, if, if someone's saying that you will make like a million bucks you know make a million bucks this year from just your 100 account you know it's it's just it's unrealistic to do this so it's it's one you know one step that it could be a scam like um, I would say another thing is to, to look at how did you find out about the product uh, because those scams usually come from spammy emails that most of the time go to the spam inbox obviously but some of them might get through you know to your normal inbox and if you just open it and it just tells you that it's a new holy grail another magic pill so to speak um, just don't believe it because because it just doesn't you know magic pills doesn't exist no, it doesn't don't. you know th there are no magic pills in weight loss there are no magic pills in investments and there are no magic pills in muscle building or whatever you know and you, you have to do the work that's the that's a magic pill you have to do the work basically i really i really love that quote by henry ford um who said that um I, 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 I can't I can phrase it exactly, but basically it was something like uh, if you ask for opportunity um, and it knocks on your door, don't be surprised that it's a uh, hard work standing on the other side of the door, basically. Um, so it, it, it's always a hard work involved in any, you know, it, even if it's just creating EAs and even if when I speak that it's very easy to do this, like generate trade trading EAs these days, like thousands per day, uh, you know, this so for some it might sound unrealistic. Obviously, there's there's still a lot of work involved, and I would say the biggest work you need to do is to monitor the EA. So even if you just purchase EA online and you just put it and forget it chances are it will just stop working. Even if, he, if if the provider will tell you that we will provide you new presets like parameters for the EA and updates and so on, you will have to update the EA. So that's another another work for you. You, know, you have you have to perform these tasks to keep the EA running. Of course. Assuming, yeah, if, yeah, so it's always be work involved, you know. It, even banks don't, you know, if, if, if you get to speak with someone who does auto trading in, in a bank, 
or some big institution. They have like hundreds of EAs running on one account. And it's like portfolios of EAs. That's what we're doing like this year, like creating portfolios. Like one of my accounts is running, I think, 30 or maybe 40 EAs right now. And I'm monitoring each of them every day. And if one of them doesn't meet the criteria, gets to the drawdown, which is not normal for that specific one EA, I would get to that EA and see what's wrong with it. And maybe I need to re-optimize it, replace it or dismiss it. So basically, it's always, you know, working well, even if it's very easy and automatic, it's still there is work involved, you know, it's, it's never like, click and forget it. So basically, uh, everyone's that saying that just, you can take the EA, put it on account and just forget about it. It's really, you know, I, I cannot say that it's, it's a scam if they say that. But everyone should know that there's no such thing basically set it and forget it so treat it like more as a journey um rather than like a magic pill for example like people who go into discretionary trading um think quite a lot of the time before they've really cut their teeth in the market that there is like myself included when i was new to trading that there was this magic kind of time where we could all trade like go go long in the footsie set 11 30 in the morning on every second tuesday of the month and we'll be a millionaire um and i imagine a lot of people might think the same with um, EAs as well, but they're two fantastic routes to get into trading if you're in uh, this industry for the long haul. Uh, certainly, there's a place for discretionary trading like what we do and for um, EAs as well. And why not do both um, to really diversify your trading portfolio? So, Romantis, yes. wh where would people uh, find out more information about you who want to discover more about your services and what you can offer them? Well, I think the best uh, the best is to go to one of my websites, either my blog, which is ea-coder.com, or they can find me on my official website, which goes by my first and, and last name.com, like rimontaspetrauskas.com, or just Google me, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like Google Rimontas Petrauskas Forex, and yeah, you will find me. <laughs> But basically, on my official website, I have all my products, including my free webinars and free ebooks, uh, and you know, and all my software and apps included. You know, so I have, you know, I'm running multiple websites, usually a different website for different product. So they, you know, all over the place, basically. But remontospetraskas.com holds all my products you know and 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 the uh, free content that i that i'm giving away you know so you can find everything about me on the, on that website fantastic well romantas petraskas.com that's where you should all head if you want to find out more information romantas thank you very much indeed for your time it's been fantastic talking to you